Hello! In this video, I will present an example to consolidate some of the concepts acquired with transformation matrices. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to solve transformation graphs involved in a classic object grasping operation, where the robot position is provided as well as the position of the object to be picked. By doing that, we will consolidate transformation matrices related concepts, such as building transformation matrices, multiplication of transformation matrices, and computing the inverse of a transformation matrix as well, to compute, let's say, the relative position between reference frames. The main goal is to compute the target position of the robot arm, more specifically, of the flange of the robot with respect to its base so we can pick the object in the conveyor belt. Indeed, we want to compute the position and orientation of the reference frame that is highlighted with the orange arrow, because in that position the gripper will be able to grasp the object. So, now we know the problem to be solved, we also need some data, such as, let's say, the position and orientation of the robot with respect to the world frame, or the position of the conveyor belt, as well as the position of the object with respect to the conveyor belt. The reminder of data that is not provided here, for simplicity, we just simply can find out their values uh, uh, from the pictures provided, such as, for instance, the orientation of some of the reference frames. So, we will uh, start by computing the robot's reference frame with respect to uh, the, the world frame. We observe that the robot's reference frame has been rotated minus 45 degrees in the set axis, and for this reason, the transformation matrix of the robot with respect to the world frame is presented as a rotation in Z uh, of a quantity plus the base uh, translation quantity, which is 500 millimeters in both X and Y axis. Now, we intend to compute the position of the object reference frame with respect to the world frame. Before that, we need to compute the transformation matrix of the conveyor belt with respect to the world frame, and then, based on the, on the relative distance between the object and the conveyor uh, um, belt frame, uh, we will uh, compute the object frame. This, this relative distance is, let's say, provided with an encoder and uh, with that encoder, as I said, we will be able to compute the position of the object with respect to the world frame. Therefore, we observe that the conveyor reference frame is rotated 90 degrees with respect to the z-axis and shifted 1500 millimeters in x and 400 millimeters in z, the height of the conveyor belt. With that information, we can obtain the transformation matrix TWC. On the other hand, the object is shifted 700 millimeters in the y-axis with respect to the conveyor uh, belt reference frame, without being rotated, which leads to the transformation TCO. Therefore, we can get the transformation TWO, that's the transformation of the object with respect to the wall frame, just by multiplying the previous transformations in the right order, obtaining the resulting transformation, as you can see here. If we want to pick the object, then we can place the gripper frame in the indicated position and orientation with the orange arrow. Take into account that here I'm just pretending to show which is a possible target configuration for the gripper from its current position, which is the frame centered uh, in the object and uh, with the x-axis pointing towards you, and the z-axis pointing downwards. Also, take into account that I have also included the object reference frame, which is the one with the x-axis pointing backwards, and the z-axis pointing uh, uh, backwards, yeah, and the z-axis pointing upwards. Therefore, if we compute the relative tra uh, transformation between the tool and the object, we can see that there's 180 degrees rotation around X and then a 180 degrees rotation around Z, as it is expressed by the transformation TOT. On the other hand, from Ripper's manufacturer, we know that 
the gripper is shifted 180 millimeters with respect to the end effector frame, the flange of the robot, in the set axis, which leads to the indicated transformation TET. Now we can compute the transformation of the robot's end effector with respect to its base. Uh, the transformation uh, T art E highlighted in red, uh, or with a, a red arrow, in the transformation graph. As you can see, we can compute the tool position to pick the object from two diff uh, different ways. On the one hand, we can compute it from the robot's frame and the factor until the tool frame, and on the other hand, we can compute it from the conveyor belt, the object frame, and again the tool frame. Thus, this poses an equation there where the unknown transformation TRE is, is, the, is the transformation TRE. With the right algebraic operations, we can, be, uh, uh, we can uh, express or uh, obtain the, the expression below. In the left, we, the, uh, will allow us to obtain, in this case, uh, the numerical results of these transformations. Please bear in mind that in order to obtain that result, I had to perform not just matrix multiplications, but also the inverse of matrix uh, or transformation matrices. And if you recall, the inverse of a transformation matrix is a, uh, a well-known expression, which actually does not require to perform a conventional matrix inversion. Here, indeed, I show the actual operations that were, or one of the, the ones that were required to perform the computations of the inverse transformation matrix, in this case, the transformation TWR. As you can see, the rotation submatrix is transposed, while the translation component is the translation vector multiplied with the rotation matrix transposed and negated. Also note that by performing the inverse, we actually are obtaining the position and orientation of the world reference frame with respect to the robot reference frame. And for that reason, the sub-index and the upper index are flipped in the inverse operation. In this video, I have shown an example to, in order to consolidate some of the concepts related with the transformation matrices that were acquired in the previous videos. Thank you very much.